Okay, recording. But silence your, can you see now? Am I guess I guess. Yeah. Okay, we got Doug on. Yay. We're recording. Just waiting for that one last minute. Mm -hmm. One minute. One minute. This is fun, you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, and then we can post this one too. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is gonna have a lot of content in it, which would be nice. All right, here we go, guys. Oh my God, hang on. Here. Oh yeah. Here we go. Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you today? Here we are. Uh, another week. Another week. Um, excited to share mm -hmm. these pearls of knowledge, the Opta Lib um, pearls of knowledge with everyone out there. Uh, yeah, we got to live mornings. We got Doug Anderson here, and of course Dr. Amy and Eric. And um, what are we, Amy? What are we chatting about this week? We're actually going to spend the whole week talking about um, just managing anxiety uh, using our four pillars. We've got a lot of good oh, tools a lot we're going to share with yeah. you. A lot of need um, for that. And I mean, obviously, this time of year, this um, time in our life, I think it's an unprecedented time that I'm seeing. Anxiety escalate. Anxiety is always a big thing in our society. Um, we live in a very stressful, fast-paced world, but um, obviously, especially now, just seeing a lot more anxiety. So we just want to give you some tools and maybe again help you be a little mini scientist to understand where you are on the spectrum and um, what we have to offer to maybe help. Yep. Out. No, that's and great. This is, the, this is the breathe pillar today. We have four that's pillars right. with to Live, as you guys all know: breathe, eat move mm -hmm. and sleep and today we're talking about the breathe pillar and we were talking about this yesterday and um how the breathing and a calm breath activates the parasympathetic nervous system which accelerates healing which that's a big thing right now that we're going through today we're talking about breathe pillar and i love how we went and we tackled last week was um consciousness and to th this week we're going to spend the whole week on anxiety and stress oh my goodness yeah mm -hmm. You know, the other thing I think that's um, interesting is that when we can, you know, our mind follows our breath. So we use the breath a lot. That's our first pillar. We build upon that all the time. We talk about it all the time. We talk about giving you homework for even just breathing for two minutes a day. Because if your mind and your breath can be connected, we can create a calm, steady state. And um, in seconds, you can start calming yourself down. And anxiety does start melting away just by following your breath. And I think another thing that I'm, I absolutely love, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, the meditation pill, uh, part aspect of our breathe pillar. And uh, just to bring ourselves into this state of consciousness, mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk a little bit today about what is yoga nidra and how that benefits us. But all those get us into this state of self-realization, which I think is... Uh, so, so important. And being sure. more conscious and more <clears throat> intentional, I think that's what's, um, what we want. Is we all want to live a more intentional life. I think then you end up having a more joy-filled, authentic life. So let's talk a little bit about, I mean, you know, we're throwing all these. I think most people have heard of what is yoga. And if you think about, okay, what is yoga? People are, <clears throat> at least in the West, we're thinking of a yoga class where people are standing on their heads and, and um, you know, putting their foot Some behind. Some of us are, Eric. <laughs> and, Some of us are. You speak for yourself. <laughs> but, I mean, we definitely, I think most people think of it as a movement class. Mm -hmm. right. and, and for sure, it is, it is that. Um, good morning. Look, we got a couple people, Melissa, Kelly, and, and Kelly. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> but um, I think that at the end of the day, the yoga nidra ends up really being a lot more about how um, we can integrate into the body and begin to just 
relax it, soften it. Um, we're definitely much more working at the uh, <clears throat> at the mental, emotional uh, level. And uh, Amy, I know you're going to get into this a lot more detail. But the yoga nidra is really not a, uh, as as much of a physical practice as it is more of a mental practice. And the goal is to bring your physical, <clears throat> mental, emotional body into complete relaxation. Um, right. So as we talk through this, it's going to make a lot of more lot more uh, sense about what exactly it is. Um, but it is just a technique, basically, that we're going to share kind of the science behind and talk about why we use it. Because it is, yeah. it's one of our tools that um, we use a lot in our coaching. And, um, well, especially Eric and Doug, I know you can talk more about just the benefits you've seen with clients that you've worked with. I know that you guys have gone through the 200 hour, Amy, you've gone through a 500 hour yoga teacher training um, certification. Um, and, you know, that is one of the things that we definitely practiced um, a lot. And uh, the guided component of, um, you know, yoga is really what we're getting at with, uh, with the Yoga Nidra. And uh, I think we're, we're excited to be able to share these modalities. These are um, definitely aspects of our plans when we're working with people that uh, we give them some collateral material to help them with some uh, guided uh, meditations. But really what they are are uh, Yoga Nidra, mm -hmm. aspects of Yoga Nidra. So let's get into this a little bit, Amy. I know you're wanting to talk a little bit about the brain mm -hmm. and how it works. Well, I think the first place to start would be understanding there's these different states of consciousness. Um, you probably have heard them talk about our brain waves. Um, there are all kinds of brain waves out there. There's like beta, alpha, theta, delta. So the beta is, and, and that's like they measure these. You've probably heard of people getting like EEGs and different things like that. And so there's a lot of study behind the brain and our consciousness. And so the beta is like your awake state when you're um, like awake, alert. So we spend a lot of our time in beta. And I always then, think of the beta fish. Yeah. That's the one that's so active, right? Yeah. This is when our brain is active. That's, funny. that's a yeah. good way to remember it. And so you start, you've got two extremes. We have the beta and then the sleep states are more the um, theta and delta. So theta is like right when you're... Um, kind of going from awake to asleep and falling asleep and then the delta is like the deep sleep Well, there's one in there called alpha and the alpha waves are like this state where you're awake But you're in complete deep relaxation and that is what we're working with with yoga nidra We're trying to because face it most of us do, do people not need a, a longer relaxed state in their life Amy come on and we don't spend we don't have time for time that in this alpha state. <laughs> we all do I know I'm joking and so there's actually been a lot of scientific studies on yoga nidra and showing the benefits to it because it has benefits from we talk a lot about these nervous systems and, and that parasympathetic system about the calming system. Well, yoga nidra, a lot of it is, is shifting our body into more of that relaxed state. It's also been shown to do things such as like even lower blood pressure, um, help asthma, help anxiety, which we're talking about, um, and depression. So there, um, what we're trying to do is help your body. And, and this stuff goes on in our body without us even being conscious of it. This is constantly It's how the body on. works, yeah. And so we're just trying to help you find a way, help us all get more into that alpha um, wave state in our in our mind and in our body. Which will then combat stress and anxiety because that's mm -hmm. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more stress we have for some reason, Amy, I know you've said this before, but it really, it really puts a burden on our immune system. And I know during this time, uh, you know, with... COVID right now, uh, what we'd all like, and this is one of the reasons why Amy said we got to turn this series on now, is that we hope that all the listeners, anyone that's tuning into this, um, is able to utilize some of the aspects of, of what we're sharing with you so that your immune system can be as strong as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, at least, all, well, we'd love to say always, but at least during this time to sure. put a, a hyper focus on it. Uh, I do want to say that um, if people are wondering, well, how long has this Yoga Nidra been around? Um, this uh, has been an oral, oral practice within uh, yoga for, uh, I think, 1,000 BC. Wow. wow. So, <clears throat> and we use um, 
a lot of, we really enjoyed this it book. book. Uh, it's a great book, Yoga Nidra. And this is by Swami Swatyananda Saraswati. Um, I know that's a lot to say, but um, it really breaks down the science. And again, yoga is really at the end of the day, just a science. It's a study of the body and how to uh, integrate different techniques and modalities to help benefit um, and prepare the body for just tuning into yourself. Um, or they, I think they'd love to say, and, and Yoga Nidra is really all about getting to a state of self-awareness, um, trying to tune into that little whisper. And if that little whisper for you is your soul or your creator, then that's, that's ultimately what we'd like to get people to. But you know, really, let's just start with trying to relax the body. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that be so, and we need to also mention that all this stuff we have tons of collateral collateral material out there that we have recorded. We've made videos and stuff, and you can find that you guys at optolive.com. Go on there, click the button, make an appointment, and all that stuff is there for you. You can just watch it and follow along. Well, let's talk a little bit, um, I guess, before we get into the technique and talking more about exactly what Yoga Nidra is, because I do see a good question out there about how does Yoga Nidra differ from Bikram Hot Yoga? Um, <laughs> so that's perfect. We can address that. Um, so Way to go, Noel. I'm a, big, I'm a big Bikram Hot Yoga guy as well. And I would say they're probably on the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, Doug, you... We've done the Bikram uh, together, and Amy has as well. Um, <clears throat> so the Yoga Nidra is really going to be, and we're going to, I think at the end of this, I don't think we're going to have time today to do a Yoga Nidra practice, um, but we're going to send everybody a link um, that is signed up on our um, website, so you can always go to our website right now, optolive.com, and then there's a place in there to put your email, and then um, at the end of this segment... Um, I'm going to blast out, and, and Amy said, "Let's just let's just make uh, your one of your yoga nidra sessions available for 30 days or something." Yeah. So we're going to do that uh, at the end of this. But go out to optolive.com and um, really uh, make sure that if you haven't already, uh, add your email into um, our website, and then we'll we'll send a link out to you later today so you can practice it. It's a great thing to do uh, right before you go to bed. Definitely prepares the body um, to be in that alpha stage, like Amy was saying, a little bit longer. And these are these are just the frequencies of the brain. That alpha stage is, is anywhere from eight to 12 cycles per second. Uh, but again, this is that deep relaxation, um, you know, conscious dreaming, uh, the visionary states of the mind and it's a great place to hang out a little bit longer than what we do a lot of times we go right from beta into try to get into delta which is deep sleep and we did we didn't relax at all and that's just not uh, the the ideal way to get into and prepare for the next eight hours of your day which is sleep and a lot of people will say I feel like I didn't sleep at all. Even though right. like they do a sleep study, they slept. It's because you're really not getting into that relaxed state and you might be having a lot of dreams or just fitful sleep or waking up a lot, um, off and on, restless. So the whole point of it too is to help help get more better quality sleep. And we'll talk more about that this week, um, Thursday, on our sleep pillar. And I think Amy and Doug uh, and I would say that I think as Americans, we've almost forgotten how to relax. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, we seem to wear a badge for um, being busy or being active or, you know, having more to do than what we can get done. And um, I, it's probably not the healthiest way to live. It's interesting. I, I've heard people talking about it, and I think we've experienced this too, and I know you guys too, Doug, your family. You know, we're so used to our kids being in school and in sports and having to leave and commute and go to work and come home and get dinner. The and rat race. All the, it's really <laughs> strange to not have all of this time. You did say this you just yesterday. You're like, this is really lovely. And there's parts oh. I, mean, I really miss because we got up and I missed going to church with my family. So we did online church with everybody across the country. And I missed, um, you know, that closeness. I, it is hard. But I also, 
didn't miss running late to church because we're always <laughs> late to church, running late to get back to cook, running, running to here, running to there. So I think right now is the time to take advantage of some pauses and maybe practice this yoga nidra. So um, let's get back into the stress response. I want to just, again, yeah, we're what all be little mini scientists by the end of this to understand what happens. Well, it's interesting. So our eyes, our ears, right? There are senses. And so, and sometimes it's our thoughts and those senses, maybe they perceive a threat or there's a real threat coming in, right? So we see something, oh my gosh, this is going to fall on me or this tiger is going to get me. And so we send signals to our brain and there's a part in our brain called the amygdala and that's um, like an emotional control center. And so the amygdala sends signals and if it's sensing stress it'll send a distress signal to our brain so again that can be a true threat that's coming on that can also be just a, a thought a perceived threat like oh gosh um what if what if i get sick what if i don't have enough money what if i so we're sending these signals to our brain and so there's a place in our brain called the hypothalamus which is like our our command center our control center and that dumps out signals and chemicals and hormones get released. So we've probably all heard of like our adrenal glands, our pituitary. Well, those adrenal glands secrete stress hormones such as cortisol, um, adrenaline. We've all heard of adrenaline. So you hear about stories too about how all, I mean, this stuff is happening automatically. How somebody's like, I don't even know how I we're lifted wired. this car off we're of wired somebody. This way, yeah. They were, you know, a car ran over them, and I don't even know where this came from. But because as all this is happening, all these chemicals get dumped and they get shunted away from areas that maybe it doesn't need right away, and blood flow gets shunted to areas that need it. Our breathing gets rapid. Our um, Blood vessels might constrict to pump up more blood and to pump our blood pressure up and our heart rate up so that we can get ready. Um, there are all these physiological effects. We start releasing a lot of sugar and fat so that we can be ready to, to use it to phys physically fight or get ready for stuff. Now, the problem is, you know, that's under an acute stress. Our body's got an amazing stress physiological response but we are constantly under stress day in day out um, we live in this high stress state so we're always taxing not a lot our of rest body in and we're telling our body hey beyond beyond come on dump out more we need more so what does it do it chronically is dumping out things like cortisol adrenaline um, our sugar starts getting revved up when we dump out sugar and fat and and then we start building up more fat stores to be prepared because our body's in the stressed alert mode. So we start having higher belly fat. Our blood pressure goes up. Um, we start having digestive problems. There's just so many things that physiologically are going on because these chemicals are, our body is telling us. And so what we can do with yoga nidra is we can actually calm down that stress response. Because remember that stress response is the sympathetic. Right. And we right. want to induce the parasympathetic. So yoga nidra is a great way to turn on the parasympathetic, turn off the sympathetic nervous system. So I'm just going to kind of walk through a breakdown of what a class would look like. And no, I know you were asking, is it like the Bikram? And this is why it's not like the Bikram. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is that we, we typically would start with uh, just some kind of, um, you know, a, a gentle relaxation. Um, they put bookmarks on either side of the Yoga Nidra class, which is your intention. And your intention is usually something that allows you to become better to yourself or to those around you. You know, it might be that I'm going to be more patient in my life or whatever it gets to be. More forgiving, more loving, um, something high level. So you set an intention. And then we, we usually go through... Um, an integration of the mind and the body. And so I think we did this a couple weeks ago where we actually walked through a 61 point meditation. And so a lot of times there would be something similar to that at the very beginning. Um, we get into, uh, there is some breathing and counting. And so this even, even more so integrates the mind and the body connection, but with the breathing, 
Um, and we're trying to do this and not fall asleep when we're doing the practice, because usually you're laying on your back while you're doing this. Um, there's some visualization and it's a dichotomy of visualization. So you, you might say, um, you know, a sunrise, or, and then you might say something that is a, the opposite of something that's real pleasing, which might be just a little stressful. Maybe it's a bear in the woods, or I don't know, thunderstorm. something, it's a thunderstorm, yeah, thunderstorm, yeah, torrential yeah. rain. Yeah. Um, and so there's always these dichotomies that normally would have created an emotion in you. And now that we've got you into this state of relaxation, what you're doing is you're seeing things in the mind and you, you're figuring out that you can stay relaxed amidst images in the mind. And this, re, this starts to retrain all the parts of the brain that Amy was just saying, um, the uh, amygdala and how it sounds the distress signal to the hypothalamus and how the hypothalamus, you know, would have integrated into the pituitary and adrenaline glands. All that stays real quiet. Um, and you're just visualizing what's going on in the mind and not reacting to it. So that's that's the next stage of, of the practice. And then sometimes there's um, a story, um, a visualization that you can just kind of walk through a story. And then you come back out of it, you, you restate your intention, and then you start to wake the body back up. So that's kind of what a yoga nidra class would look like. You're laying on your back. Um, there's really no movement. Uh, the only movement that's happening is in your mind um, and in your brain. So it's that's something, it's something that we did in the yoga teaching training class, mm -hmm. that, and Eric would lead it. And um, I've never been able to slow my mind down. This yoga nidra practice, y'all, has just almost changed my life. It is that effective and powerful. It is. It is very powerful, <clears throat> and I think that you know we're seeing a lot more of its uses. I mean, athletes, coaches, executives, um, the military is using it. Uh, they call it eye rest. Anyway, they don't call it yoga nidra, um, you know, to help enhance performance. And even in some cases with these athletes to bring home the gold medal. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, what we would definitely want everybody. And, and so there's all kinds of benefits of yoga nidra, but ultimately the, the true reason but why it was created uh, was a thousand years BC um, to help move people closer to just self-realization. Uh, just who are you and integrating at that level. So, but use it initially just to remove um, and to begin to practice how to maintain states of relaxation. That's our first stage. And then let the other, um, you know, hopefully be, um, you know, the ultimate benefit, but uh, you start just little baby steps. Let's use it as a way to, to find relaxation in our body and in our mind. We've had really good luck with it, using it with children and teens, in addition to adults and for all kinds of things. But we did an interesting um, work, joint effort with kids who had unfortunately experienced trauma in their life. and. Again, I go back to that amygdala. Our amygdala remembers. And so once we, maybe even sometimes it's a smell that will trigger a memory. That might not be a great memory, sometimes it's a good memory. So, but we, what yoga nidra, like Eric was saying, what we're trying to do is make our body and our brain not so reactive. Because sometimes we will see or hear or smell or remember something and we have a frame of reference from something that maybe happened in the past or the way things and we've always responded to things and it doesn't have to stay that way so our brain we talk a lot about neuroplasticity our we can change and mold the way we respond the way our brain mm -hmm. reacts to things and this is a perfect tool to help you to help all of us because we all have some Something that we talk a lot about little T's and big T's, small traumas and big traumas. We've all had our stuff in life. And um, and so this is, and, and even just kids, if it was somebody picked on you or made fun of you, I mean, there are things, or I didn't make the team, and there are little things and big things that have happened in our life. And this is such an, and we don't, it doesn't matter if you remember what those things are. It's just that we all can use this tool because we all need to try to calm our brain down, calm our response time, 
and and like Eric always talks about, have more of a positive, a glass that's half full. Right. Yeah, and I think that the yoga uh, nidra and Amy uh, is mentioning some of the research and some of the studies that we've done. Um, it is also a tool to help um, with trauma mm -hmm. and the big T's and little T's, like Amy said, a bunch of little T's can have the same effect as one big T in someone's life. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder, I know the, that's one of the reasons why I think the military started to use it. They mm -hmm. just renamed it IREST. <laughs> but I know that at the military level, they're using it to help um, um, those that have had trauma in their life. But, uh, you know, if you've lived life for a while, there's, we probably all could use this at some level. It's a, it's a very effective practice and uh, not dissimilar to going to the gym. And after a few months, you notice, you, hey, I'm just a little more tone. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. It's just working at the brain level. And you would just realize, like Amy said, and, and the fact that now we know science is saying the brain's plastic, neuroplasticity, that all of a sudden, two months later, you're like, I don't know. I just, I just feel better. I just, I, I love life. And, and, uh, so that's what we I want. I don't get so anxious over things. I don't right. react. I'm not so <clears throat> responsive. Mm -hmm. You probably need to, uh, mention as well. This is not something you need to go to a class for. There's not, you don't have to go to a yoga nidra class or something. This is something you can practice at home by yourself. Yeah. And before we get too far into this, I know we're going to do our um, our drawing, our sponsorship uh, drawing. If you are listening to this and you have not made a reply uh, by way of um, say saying hi, or something. hi um, or something like that, then you will not be in this drawing. So we'll give everybody just a couple of minutes. If you are listening, make sure that you um, say hi so that we can add you to the list of people that have a have the potential to win today absolutely and you know we keep on mentioning we keep driving people back to the website there is so much for you guys to check out at the website it's, of course it's optolive.com so many different things we offer coaching sessions we offer uh, consulting and it's so i will say this amy it's so great to have you back on the program it's good to be back this week i'm off this week i'm working from home doing video visits and um, so yeah, everybody stay in, stay safe, and hopefully we'll be able to soon get, um, put this behind us and transition life back a little more into what we're used to. Can you give us an update of what's, uh, going yeah. on out there? Um, I think locally there are some good, uh, stats out on the Indiana State Department of Health website. Every day you can see the number of new cases, the number of um, total cases, and I would say we're testing a lot more people, which is wonderful. We're getting, um, and I think we're getting very close to being able to have something that is like a five to 15 minute turnaround. And I think our overall goal is that we can start really throwing this out to, especially like first responders and healthcare workers or those that are high risk or in nursing homes and things like that. Um, right. So we are seeing about four to 500 new cases a day still in Indiana. Um, I'm not sure that we've peaked, so be patient this week and, and hopefully as we start seeing those trends down, remember it's about two weeks after somebody's been exposed that they, before you know, they symptoms. maybe wouldn't develop symptoms. So um, we just need to be patient with the process. I think there are a lot of people, it's crazy the number of physicians and the government and the World Health Organization and the state departments and the federal departments that are all really putting their minds together and um, awesome work out there. So, and we're hoping to work on getting better testing, better, maybe vaccines. Right. So, so if you guys are out there, we, we appreciate, we got a couple more people that have said hi. So thank you for that. Uh, the other thing is uh, go out to optolive.com if you haven't done so already, make sure that you add your email. It's at the bottom left side of the front page. Um, add your email in there. And then I'm going to, after this, um, go ahead and post to everybody our link to the Yoga Nidra practice so that you can um, have that link. And again, we'll keep it up there for probably 30 days or so so that you can use it. 
That's great. And it's I mean, audio, by the way, so you don't have to have a right computer or anything. Yeah, like and the first, it's 22 minutes, so the first couple times you do it, if you fall asleep, that's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I am guilty of that. <laughs> but but if you can hang in there, uh, it's a great, um, it, it's, it's great for just being present and staying in that alpha state a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. So, right. are you running a generator today, Doug? You want me to run it? I, I just ran one. If in, okay, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, my neighbor, just four doors down, of course, her name is Julie Fensler, is what I came up with today. Oh, good. She's out there, and uh, oh. she used to be Julie Fields when we grew up uh, together. She's out there today, and Julie, if you're uh, still watching, we'll send you a coupon code for 50% off our services today. Check it out. You will, will not be disappointed. So let's hit, awesome job, congratulations. Let's hit our um, our homework, the end of our bookmarks. We try to start and end each of the pillars uh, with some little pearls. And that is go out there and at least try to find two minutes of stillness, or we're calling it meditation, a day. Two minutes. You can get there by just some breathing exercises. I know that we've covered here in these uh, live sessions. Um, or uh, just sit still and, and look at the sunrise for two minutes. But uh, that's your homework. If you can go longer, that's awesome. Yeah, perfect. I'm loving this, you guys. I love being with you every morning. And I love uh, touching people. Of course, uh, Noel and Louise are out there. They watch from Australia. Of course, it's evening time. They've got their place. And uh, we love the Good night, guys. guys. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Hey, we'll yeah. see everybody uh, tomorrow uh, for the Eat Pillar. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Nice. You guys, that was like way too easy. I hope it was. Um, yeah. I made this simple enough, didn't I? I get to talk and I'm like, I don't even know what oh, to say it. yet about the stress response, but hopefully it was good. Yeah. Good stuff. Good mm -hmm. stuff. I'm going to go ahead and text Julie. You guys know who Julie is, right? Well, that name, Julie feels what he's done. Yeah, Woody's daughter. Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh, I didn't know she's your neighbor. She's That's down nice. the street. Jill Kane was on there. I That's just funny. saw that. And Kelly Gallantine. That's hilarious. Well, if you guys see other people, I was just like, oh my no, gosh. No, I'm glad awesome. you did that. that yeah, you awesome, got to do that, Doug. Doug. I mean, we're, I, at That's first good. we started with a random generator at this point. Let's just start giving people yeah, what happened. Yeah, I just think there's we see. <laughs> We got a well, I saw her name pop up and, and I'm like, that I was saw awesome. her down real quick. I didn't even see her.